Good afternoon, everyone. So we are ready to start our presentation. Uh, thank you very much for being here today, attending this, this uh, weatherproofing uh, meeting. Uh, my name is Nuno. I'm an account manager here at Episus. And uh, today we have with us uh, Paula, our technical manager. Good afternoon, Paula. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Nuno. I hope that the session will be able to meet your expectations. So let's start. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Paula. So today uh, we are going to talk to you a little bit about our AVCL membranes, its main concepts and the concerns that we have on, on regarding the AVCL membranes. We are going to cover some topics that are listed here. So uh, ventilated facades, we are going to give you definition of the AVCL membrane. Uh, some main considerations that you should have uh, when applying it on your projects. Uh, uh, we, are talk we are going to talk about the vapor air tightness, uh, how to install this kind of product, uh, how, why are we uh, achieving excellence in the details. Uh, we are going to, to talk a little bit about fire reaction and our uh, A1 membrane uh, that we have on our portfolio and also the consulting part of our, of our business in terms of how we deliver technical supports to clients. And also uh, we are going to show you the, the, where you can download the guidance for consultants and what it consists of. And so ventilated facades, and here we have four examples of ventilated facades, as you know, uh, it is a facade construction with an air gap between the insulation, the, fa the facade cladding. Uh, this, of course, creates a way for natural ventilation and protects the building against the weather, uh, while at the same time creating a healthy indoor climate. And so uh, usually in the European climate, what we have is a warmer uh, temperature on the inside of a building and a colder uh, weather on the outside. Uh, and also you can have effects like uh, rain uh, and you need to protect the facade against these driving elements. And so what we do have here is uh, physically talking, what you have when you have a warmer uh, temperature and a colder temperature, what it, what it does is a water will migrate from the, cold, the warmer side to the colder side. And so if you, if you don't have any membrane protecting your facade, what you'll have is this movement of water and vapor from the inside to the outside. And that's why you should apply a membrane, which is here uh, in green, uh, AVCL membrane, that will uh, not allow that to, to happen. And uh, obviously, in addition to that, you should apply on the outer side of your, your facade, here represented in blue, a breather membrane. So, but today we will focus more on this AVCL, the interior part of, of uh, your facade. Uh, so our, we have a wide range of, of um, technologies here in our company. We go from breather membranes to vapor membranes to EPDM membranes, but today we will focus on vapor control layers technology. Uh, each fire protection on our portfolio goes from A1 to E. Uh, and also in terms of mechanical resistance, we have reinforced membranes and non-reinforced membranes. Um, this is a typical rain screen cladding scheme. So uh, breather membrane on the outside here represented in blue, AVCL uh, membrane on the inside represented in green. And also on the interfaces, you, you can apply our emphasis echo facade, which is our EPDM solution. Uh, so regarding the AVCL membrane, there are some main considerations that I would like to tell you about. Uh, so these AVCL membranes need to be watertight, airtight, and vapor tight, and so diffusion closed, of course. Uh, and this is all because we need to prevent the facade from condensation risks, from uh, this migration from the water and vapor from the inside to the outside. And this will all lead to, of course, reduce of moisture flow uh, into and through the walls, roofs, and floors. Uh, and also one main consideration that you should have is, is regarding fire classification. And today, later, uh, Paulo will talk uh, a little bit more about this. Uh, we now have an A1 solution. So best possible fire rating available on the market, uh, best possible solution, best possible technology to apply on a project. Also, you should also pay attention, close attention to mechanical resistance in terms of tear and tensile uh, strength because this is really important on a project because you should, you should apply 
the best possible materials that are resistant to all these forces. Um, and so we need to comply when it comes to AVCL memories. We need to comply with a lot of regulations. Uh, we have listed some of the regulations here. For instance, the 13984, which is the regulation that we have, the BSEN for flexible sheets for waterproofing. Um, and uh, for instance, the BS5250, uh, that, you know, there are recommendations on uh, the DSD values that the membranes need to have. And this, for instance, lists that uh, DSD value should be of not less than uh, 500 M, 500 meters. So uh, when of evaluating the products that you're going to apply in your project, you should take all these, uh, these uh, norms into consideration, these standard norms into consideration, and for instance, on our membranes, this is a list of the, of the regulations that we can apply with. Uh, for instance, the SD value, uh, the water penetration is the EN 1928. Uh, for the tensile strength and the elongation and the tear resistance is, is also different, a different norm, which is the 12311 or the 12310. Uh, we also did testing and passed on the artificial aging which is the norm that we follow is the 1296 and the 12 uh, the 1931 and so all when evaluating what kind of product you're going to apply it at site at your project you should uh, actually take a close look if the product actually passed these whole uh, tests these whole methods and complies with all these uh, regulations and norms um, and so I would say I would like to tell you about consequences of having a leaky air tightness uh, in your facade, in your membrane, and I would uh, talk to you about three main uh, main things here. So the first of all, first the first one would be heat loss. Of course, when you have a small leak at your uh, at your uh, facade, it is easy to understand that when you are heating uh, an inside space, you're going to be having you know loss of efficiency if you have this small gap on your wall because the warm um, the warm weather will migrate the warm the temperature will migrate to the outside it will go to the colder temperatures and so you should focus on this on this uh, consequency when when um, when taking care of your project and so number two would be mo moisturization and mold so water that is inside and vapor that is inside is going to migrate through that little spot on your facade if you don't take close if you don't pay close attention to this and also i'd say the third one would be deficient soundproofing of course if you don't isolate completely your inside uh, flat for instance you're going to be having defic deficient uh, soundproofing here uh, and so actually um measure this kind of uh, this kind of values uh, the university of stuttgart the institute of building physics did an experiment setup and uh, they measured uh, a block of one meter per one meter with 14 centimeters uh, uh, thickness and uh, without a gap on your wall you'd have a u value of 0 0.3 but imagine that you uh, uh, have a gap of one millimeter on your wall uh, actually, with one, with just one millimeter gap, the U value would decrease, would increase to 1.44, which would bring the performance of your facade down by a factor of 4.8. So, uh, the importance of not having a gap is really, really high in this in these kind of situations. Uh, the same thing applies for moisturization and mold. Uh, by leakages and gaps, and uh, the same experiment was done by the Institute, Institute of Building Physics in Stuttgart. And with just one millimeter gap, uh, they got 800 grams of water per square meter in just 24 hours. So imagine you have a gap for 5, 10, 20 years. Imagine the amount of water that is going to migrate from the inside to the outside, and then condensate in, on the inside of your wall and lead to mold growth and corrosion, you know, all big problems that you need to avoid when uh, designing uh, a project, designing a facade. Uh, and so Paolo now will, will tell you how to apply the membrane to not have these kind of uh, problems in the future, right Paul? Exactly, so now let's explain how to apply our EVCL membrane, right? So uh, we will now briefly explain the application 
method uh, to our FE, Zush vapor FR membrane. And no, no, if you could go ahead, please. Um, in application of the membrane to the substrate, we can have two situations. We can have smooth surface and porous surface, as we indicated here. In the case of smooth surface, we are talking about, for example, fixing the membrane to SFS studs, which is a very common situation in the UK. And for this application, we have our FISUS to a joint DF tape, that is a self-adhesive tape. In this type of solution, we recommend to fix the membrane with a spacing of five or 600 millimeters. Normally, this is the spacing values between these elements. Uh, I'm sorry, normally the spacing values between these elements are around these values, okay? That's why we recommend five to 600 millimeters. In case uh, of porous surface, such as concrete, for example, um, we can use our self-adhesive tape um, it's the Ephesus tube on the S or our past adhesive Ephesus bonding cap uh, key F plus P. Um, for example, if there are movements, we should use uh, the tape solution because we know that this tape uh, has a great elongation. But as always, and as we always say, this is something that we have to analyze project by project according to the clients and the project needs. But we have here three different solutions for two different situations that we would like to highlight. And in the next slide, um, we have here some solutions for overlap situations. Um, we also consider these in our systems. On the vertical overlaps, we usually advise to use 150 millimeters, and for horizontal overlaps, uh, 100 millimeters. Um, and for our FISUS vapor FR so, uh, system, we use our self adhesive tape FISUS to a joint TF. And we have here another solution that is our VAP uh, membrane. And for this AVCL membrane, we use our FISUS joint GS tape. Um, <clears throat> we bring here today uh, an example. We present here an example of a math statement that we do on our technical proposals. For example, in this project, our climate set is this drawing. We analyze the project, consider all the constraints, all the, subs the different substrates and presented our solution, as you can see here in this detail. Uh, here we have, uh, we suggested our vapor FR membrane that you can see in purple, applied over uh, the insulation on the internal side. And we used FISUS to bond S, as I mentioned before, to fix the membrane to concrete. Um, we always take all the details into consideration. We go detail by detail with our client, and we try always to pay attention to all the details. Um, we know that in the UK, the quality of the membranes are fairly good. Um, but we see that the market lacks detail in terms of accessories. So we have here um, a, a table where we present you that we have our systems tested considering all the accessories, considering overlaps, substrate fixing, perimeter sealing, nailing and screw perforations. And we do this for both breather system and our vapor system. We are not talking about our breather system today, but we, always, we also have this information for our breathable system. We take, we take in consideration if we are talking about sheeting boards, concrete, galvanized steel, and aluminum. And of course, for each of these different substrates, we have different accessories and solutions that, um, that we can apply. And we'll explain the next slide that we have these different uh, solutions because we can have different substrates and we can have different situations on each project. 
um, we would like to mention here that we perform computability tests in our laboratory. And as I was saying, it's, a really, it's really important to do a proper assessment of the products applied along with the overall substrate. We can use the best membrane and you can apply our, um, our best membrane, but along with that, we need to assure that these products will perform well together membrane, accessories, and the substrates, and to ensure that you have a good effective solution. Uh, here we can see an example of a compatible test report. Um, I, I'm sorry, this, yes, this is a surface adhesion report. Um, as I mentioned, um, in our site visits, we have been noticed that there are often problems on site because of the use of an untested material. So we would like to draw to your attention this problem. Um, and as uh, compatibility tests, when we do it in our lab, we elaborate these compatibility re reports where we place our pictures and confirm if it is compatible or not. And we proceed our technical proposal if it's okay. If not, we will study a better solution and help the client to find um, a better solution for this project. So, no, no. <laughs> Thank you, Paula. Like uh, yes, here you can see perfectly uh, an example of uh, an installation of uh, when, when we applied uh, Vapor FR in a, in a project in London. Uh, and so we go into details, like you said before, in terms of uh, how to apply the, the, the product, which are the best accessories to apply in the project with different substrates, with different substrate compatibility, and all the things that you've said previously. Uh, I would like to highlight the membrane perforations, which is very, very important, and which is something that we really, really pay attention to. So here we have six situations, six different situations uh, at site. We know that when uh, we are applying our vapor membrane, there are perforations, MEP perforations, electrical sockets, you know, plumbing, and many other many other perforations that you can find at site. And if you have no idea on how to seal these kind of spots, these weak spots on your facade, you're going to have problems in the future. Like I said previously, just one millimeter gap will uh, lead to problems in terms of moisturization and and you know heat losses, and you don't want that. And so we focus a lot on those kind of uh, on those kind of detail. And uh, for instance, here we have a technical proposal of what we usually do to our clients. And this is, was a very simple technical proposal that we've made with to our clients. Uh, for instance, we have here a, a, a electrical so a box or, or something like that. And we've, uh, we've um, done a step-by-step -step, uh, application of our membrane on how to deal with these kind of situations at site because, you know, manpower nowadays at site usually or sometimes is not of the best quality uh, one one guy is applying this kind of solution one week and then he is changed for another guy that might not be used to this kind of work and if you don't give them all these details all these instruction all this information you might lose quality or compromise the quality of your of your facade of your vapor uh, membrane application and so here on a very simple step-by-step -step application on how to cut the membrane around the perforation, how to apply and what kind of product to apply on the on the on this perforation or the perimeter of the perforation, and how to put how to place the patch, uh, how, what what kind of product to use to bond uh, this patch to the perforation. We explain everything. We go into detail uh, with all these membrane perforations that you might have on your project. Uh, and of course, there are many types of perforations in, 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 you know, in your facade that you can have. Uh, for instance, here we have four different examples. Uh, on the first one, I would like to highlight again our two bond DS, which is a unique pro uh, product in the market. Uh, here you have a bracket uh, perforation, for instance. And our what, what our tape does, you get a small patch. And when you are screwing through the, the, the membrane, uh, this tape is going to encapsulate your screw and not allow any water or vapor to actually go inside. And so you'll have your facade fully protected against uh, these kind of problems. Uh, on the second picture, for instance, you have uh, an EPDM sleeve that we can develop. And in terms of, of EPDMs, we have no limitations. 
we can provide you with any form of, of EPDM. And so, because you can have a beam perforation on your facade, we can develop a solution that will fully protect your facade against the weather, against water, against paper. Um, so regarding fire, which is very, very important, I'd like uh, Paula to highlight this, this subject now. Paula? Yes, just, yeah. Okay. Um, here briefly, we have some picture of the fire events in 2019, but there was also one last month in London. So unfortunately, we keep talking about this because it keeps happening. It's imperious that the construction industry and the facade community develops non-combustible or at limited combustibility solutions for the entire facade composition to help protect building property and human lives. It's very important. So we have here, um, we will just like to explain in the next slide, Nuno, um, how the classification is done. It's important to have a, um, a more, um, um, more information about this. We have a classification for material reaction to fire according to the standard 13501 part one. The rating scales range from F to A1, as you can see. And here, A1 is the best classification and the solution will not contribute to the fire in any stage. And F is a very combustible solution. Our effusions, vapor FER membrane, and also our effusions, breather FER membrane, are both fire rated plus A1. So they have the best classification possible. Another point on the classification is the smoke production. And as you can see here, it goes from S3 to S1, where um, three has unlimited smoke production and one has a lowest smoke production. And also we, me we measure flaming droplets or particles. And in this case, D2 corresponds to unlimited flaming droplets and D0 will correspond to no flame flaming droplets. So we always want to have the best uh, classification here. And we are very uh, proud that we have already our FISUS vapor FR and breather FR membrane class A1. Um, here, I'd like to summarize the information regarding our AGCL system. In this case, so we are talking about FISU vapor FR system. We performed further testing with our adhesives, our tapes, and all the necessary accessories and simulate the end use of the facade. And we obtained the class A2S1D0 as a whole system, including here our class A1 membrane vapor FR. Of course, our membrane passed all the necessary tests and is a vapor barrier, water and air tightness. All half of our accessories were tested and are compatible with different substrates. It fulfills the whole UK facade applications. It's, it is a solution that is mechanical resistant and also has some flexibility. We have also our solution with CA marking and complies with all the regulations in the UK. And it can be highly customized in terms of widths and adhesives, bands, and we always customize, um, try to help the best our client. And this last point is also very important for us because of environmental issues, of course, it fulfills BRIAM, leads and ME codes uh, requirements. Here, we bring to a summary comparison. We have done further comparison with the standard membrane class B. And in relation to fire performance, as you can see, it presents better performance. We have class A instead of class B. Class A is the best one on the classification. For tensile strength, you can see it almost doubles the value and for water vapor resistance is a lot higher than a standard class B membrane. That happens because we have in our composition an aluminum foil that improves the water vapor resistance of this membrane. And as you can see, uh, we really believe and we can show you that our vapor FR membrane um, is uh, 
the best solution <laughs> that you can find, not only for, for fire uh, classification, but also for the other characteristics. Um, consulting and technical support are also very important part of our job. Actually, is what uh, defines us. Uh, here we have some image, Im images, I'm sorry, from technical submissions and details that we analyzed before. As we explain, we analyze project by project. We care about our clients' needs. They share with us their details and it's always an interactive process where we try to find the best solution for each project. And as we said, we perform further compatibility tests if required to make sure that we do uh, not have the problems mentioned earlier. And we also do site visits and practical training as Nunu was saying, it's a very important thing um, regarding the workmanship that most of the times are not the best. So we provide all the support that is necessary to help um, applying the membrane the best as possible. Some more examples for our technical submissions, what kind of technical documents we produce. We have here some images. So this is what we do on our daily basis. We have been working with many clients in the UK for the last years and also developing relationship. And the um, feedback has been really positive. So if you have any doubts, any questions about any detail of a project that you are saying, please feel free to always contact us and we'll try to help you the best as we can. Thank you, Paula. So uh, just to conclude this, this presentation, so you, you can go to our website and download our FCS guidance that we have developed for consultants and architects. And there you can find the portfolio that we have and the whole accessories that you should use with each, uh, with each membrane system and also considering the substrates that you have there. So if, for instance, if you are considering a concrete substrate, you might use a product. If you are considering a different substrate, uh, a timber substrate, for instance, you will use a different, a different kind of adhesive or a kind of tape. We, uh, we, in, this, in this guidance, you can find all the information that you need to study your project and to, to know exactly which accessories and tapes you should use in, in each different substrate. Uh, but of course, this, this is a, a simple information that we have compiled in this guidance. If you want to go into detail, you should consult with us, you should send us an email, you should send us details and drawings, and we will help you with all, uh, with all of your project and all of your details that you need. Um, you can follow us on our website. We have been publishing technical articles from time to time, uh, also on our LinkedIn page. You can, of course, follow us and, and uh, attend these weatherproofing meetings that we do every 15 days. Uh, in, in 15 days, we will have a, 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 another one regarding our breather FR membrane. Uh, and also, very important, we have partnered with NBS Source and Riva. Uh, you, there you can find all of our products. You can find technical sheets. You can find our portfolios and case studies. You can find on Riva our CPD material. And this is really positive for us. We have been getting lots of positive feedback from our, from our clients. You can book a CPD uh, with us uh, and then we will define a subject with you guys and, and we will try to, to, to explain everything you need to know regarding weatherproofing. Uh, so thank you very much for attending today's, today's meeting. Uh, my name is Nuno, I'm an account manager. You have here my email and my mobile mobile number and uh, thank you Paula for being today here with me uh, and the attendees. Uh, Paula is our technical manager. If you have any technical query to, 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 to pose, you can, you can send it to, to Paula as well. Thank you very much for attending and have a nice day. Thank you, Paula. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We hope this has been useful. And if you have any questions, please contact us. We'll be very glad to help you. Thank you.